Welcome to Pressure Points. I am Gene Munster. Our topic today is Meta Earnings. This is Pressure Points. I'm going to preview the Pressure Point, which is daily active users. And before we dive into that, I'm going to take a few steps back and talk about the noise around the quarter. And when Meta reported results, shares were up about 3% through the midpoint of their earnings call. Until a question came up related to the impact of the geopolitical environment on revenue. And CFO Susan Lee mentioned that they have seen some softness in the last couple of weeks. And that's similar to what they saw with the beginning of the Ukraine war. And she couldn't attribute it specifically, but just some general softness. When CFO of a tech company uses the word softness, look out, the stock is going down. And that's exactly what happened immediately. It started to trade down, and as of this recording, it's trading down 3%. So it's had a 6% move based on that comment. And I want to put a little bit of context to that, is that comment was factored into the company's guidance, which was for December 2% higher than the street. In other words, if they wouldn't have seen this geopolitical softness, the guidance would have likely been even higher. But since they've seen it, it's uh, been uh, modestly lower, but still higher than where analysts were before. So the net of this is the demand for their business is in a good spot. I think the stock reaction also speaks to just how sensitive investors are to any negative comment. But I wanted to give my take on that before we dive into the pressure point, which is daily active users. DAUs are critical because that is the foundation that Meta builds all of their products and their engagement and their revenue on top of. Over the past few years, DAU growth has slowed because their base is getting big. It currently is at 2.1 billion, which is 25% of the world's population visits a Meta property daily. And when you get to those big numbers, it's just really hard to grow. But over the past three quarters, the DAU growth has been accelerating, going from about 2.8% year-over-year growth to 5.4% in the most recent quarter. And so accelerating a growth number off of a number that's very difficult to grow is impressive. And that lays the foundation for how they can continue to grow revenue faster. And one way that they can do that is through reels. And this has been a net drag on revenue as they basically have been redirecting traffic from Instagram over to reels and not monetizing on reels as much. But they did say that in 2024, reels should be a tailwind to revenue. So it's going to be a revenue contributor, a net revenue contributor, which is a shift. It's important. And that really sets up 2025 for reels to be a bigger deal. That, of course, is the TikTok competitor and look forward to seeing how that product can lift off of, build off of that massive daily active user base. But even beyond Reels, that daily active user base is a foundation where they can get more generative AI products. And Zuckerberg talked a lot about this on the call. They also talked a lot about this at their Connect conference. And at the most basic level, what Meta's products do is their entertainment. And the ability for generative AI to make it easier to entertain, easier for creators to create content, and easier for people like you and I to build our own fun content and just create a platform where people want to come to and spend time. So those tools are important. Those generative tools can also be used by advertisers, which of course are really important to Meta. Those advertisers can use those to try different ad campaigns more efficiently, get recommendations on creative, even make adjustments to text and uh, photos and video. And so there is a unique opportunity that Meta has, given their 2 billion daily active users, to start to weave more generative AI products into, which should increase engagement. And ultimately, that engagement should improve monetization. The last question on the conference call was related to that. How big can this be, these generative AI applications? and that was relative to reels or stories. And Zuckerberg's answer was he doesn't know, but it definitely has potential. And so 
My sense is it can be uh, bigger than that. I think the creator economy is going to surprise people in the next decade, and I think Meta is going to be a beneficiary of that. That's one of the reasons why Deepwater owns shares of Meta. Uh, that's the pressure point, daily active users. I want to just do a quick uh, postscript on a couple other topics that were relevant. One was related to margins. Margins were operating margins, 40%, the highest in two and a half years. It's even higher than it was pre-pandemic. 2019, margins were at 33%, and so they've seen a nice step up, and those likely will increase slightly next year as well. The one negative is Reality Labs and the amount that they're spending on that. They're talking about continuing to aggressively spend in that. It's probably going to be $15 billion a year. That's about half of what Apple spends for total R&D a year, $30 billion. It's just a lot of money. And I'm a big believer in spatial computing. I think Vision Pro is going to surprise people. I think Apple's got a tiger by the tail there. I think Apple's product is 10 times better than Quest product at this point. I think there still is a market. It's also, by the way, 10 times more expensive than Quest product. And I think there's two markets there. I think there's a market for those who want to spend a lot for the best experience. And I think those are there's a market for those who don't want to spend as much and get 80% of the experience. And so I think it's the right call for them to continue to invest in Reality Labs, but it's just a lot more aggressive than I feel comfortable with. I would feel more comfortable if they were spending $5 billion a year in Reality Labs. Either way you cut it, one of two things is going to happen with Reality Labs. It's either going to work and we're all going to be happy, or it's not going to work and they're going to cut spending and we're all going to be happy. So I think it's uh, heads we win, tails we don't lose type of a scenario with uh, Reality Labs. That's a wrap for this episode of Pressure Points. I'm Gene on behalf of Deepwater. Bye for now.